Welcome everyone. Welcome to AK Academy. Today we'll study the Schrodinger equation. Okay. Okay. So as we know that uh, minute particles like electrons and protons exhibit a wave-like nature, and it is also uh, has some particle-like nature. Okay. The wave-like nature is incorporated by the de Broglie hypothesis which says that a particle with momentum p has a wavelength uh, h over p okay where this h is nothing but the Planck's constant and p is the momentum and lambda is the wavelength associated with the matter wave okay now this uh, p the wavelength the sorry the momentum can be written as h cross k okay where k is 2 pi over lambda and h cross or h bar is called h by 2 pi and h is the Planck's constant. Similarly, frequency can also be written as h bar omega. Okay. Omega is the angular frequency which is 2 pi nu. Okay. Now, we want an equation okay, which will actually incorporate the particle as well as wave nature of a of a particle okay and which is, which will be also be consistent with the uncertainty principle so for that we assume that the trajectory of a particle is described by a wave function psi xt okay so how this wave function uh, in, what is the dynamics of this wave function how it evolves with time and distance okay for that we need a equation okay so how can we find such an equation okay to understand this let's assume that there is a simplest type of plane monochromatic wave okay uh, let us assume that uh, a particle whose uh, behavior is described by this wave equation this is a wave equation this is a one dimensional wave equation okay let us see uh, uh, what equation this wave satisfies okay so now we know that p equals h cross k and e equals h cross omega h cross omega so if we substitute these values here so what will we get is this equation okay is this equation now if we calculate the following things if we calculate i h bar del psi del t of this equation we will find e psi and minus i h bar del psi del x we will find out p multiplied by psi okay if we square this out we will get minus h bar squared over 2m del to psi del x del x2 equal p squared over 2m why did we do this because remember this is a one dimensional monochromatic wave which is which which uh, we have assumed that this is uh, this, this describes a free particle okay so now for a free particle p squared over 2m is the energy which is the kinetic energy and this is also the energy of the energy of the particle so in principle we can equate these two okay so for a relativistic non relativistic particle the energy equation is e equals p squared over 2m now if we substitute these values here okay so what will we get is this equation which is i h bar del psi del t equals minus h bar squared over 2m del to psi del x2 this is what we call one dimensional Schrodinger equation for a free particle okay <coughs> okay so <coughs> we have seen that if a particle is described by a um, i mean we just assume that the particle is described by a monochromatic wave okay so that so then the particle is the particle satisfies this equation okay now uh, let uh, mind you that this is a eigenvalue equation okay what it means by eigenvalue equation that there is an operator which operates on psi and gives an eigenvalue e and the eigenfunction so what will be the eigen eigen uh, the what will be the operator for energy e it will be i h bar del del t and similarly we can get here get that 
okay so the operator for an observable observable means the things that we can measure in laboratory okay in an experiment so energy can be measured in an experiment okay so it's an observable momentum is also an observable it's a physical observable these are called observables okay so similarly so operator for energy is ih by del, del t and operator for momentum is minus ih by del del x okay now schrodinger equation can be written in terms of these operators e psi equals p squared over 2m psi okay remember that these are now e and p are just operators uh, if we get back to the original schrodinger equation we have to substitute e equals ih by del del t and p equal to minus ih by del del x okay and we'll get back the Schrodinger equation for a free particle. Okay, if you want to uh, generalize it to the three dimension, then simply p squared is px squared, py squared, and pz squared. Okay, now e the its, its operator form is i h by del del t. Okay, px squared is del two del x two, py squared is del two del y two, pz squared is del z uh, del two del z two. Okay. This is a well known figure which is called a Laplacian. Okay, so operator in, of energy and momentum in three dimension is IH by del del t, which is same, and this is P is IH del gradient. This is called gradient in mathematics. Okay, so now till now we have only considered. A free particle okay so what will happen if the particle is is in a potential okay which is a function of uh, distance and time so by classical mechanics we know that the total energy of the particle is p squared over 2m plus vr okay now since the potential energy does not depend on momentum of energy the wave function should satisfy this equation okay uh, now this is the total energy of the particle this is the energy operator acting on psi. This is the total energy. Now, if we substitute the operator form for momentum, we'll get h bar over 2m del squared psi plus v psi. Okay. This is the Schrodinger equation, which is for a potential v. And this is this is the equation we will be using later on. Okay. Remember this h equals p squared over 2m plus v. This thing is called Hamiltonian operator okay so the Schrodinger equation can also be written in, in, in such a fashion that i h by del psi del t equals h psi where h is just the Hamiltonian so here this is also an eigenvalue equation so for a potential uh, for a particle inside a potential the uh, eigenvalue of the energy operator is not uh, its energy it's, it's it's called a Hamiltonian of the particle okay and the Hamiltonian operator is this. This is the Hamiltonian operator, which includes the potential also. Okay. Now, a word of caution. You might think that uh, we have just derived the Schrodinger equation. Okay, but the answer is a clear no. Okay, we haven't derived anything. Okay, we just it was just shown that if we want to reconcile both the wave nature and the corpuscular nature of particle. Okay assume the, that the particle can be described by a wave function which is in general complex it satisfies this equation okay we assume the solution okay we in in in, the, in our first place we just assumed a solution and then we uh, calculated back the equation okay and we saw that what equation does this particle or does this wave satisfy it if we uh, if we take into account the energy conservation okay the schrodinger equation <coughs> we haven't derived it okay so which means we considered this and this satisfies this equation okay so you might think that uh, how did schrodinger figure out that a wave wave uh, matter wave would satisfy this kind of equation okay so for that i would like to quote feynman that where did we get that equation from nowhere it is not possible to derive it from anything we know it okay it uh, came out of the mind of Schrodinger, and this is true okay this is like 
Newton's laws in classical mechanics. Okay, uh, you cannot derive Newton's laws for any theories before. Okay, it was the basic principles that we have to follow, and the rest is the classical mechanics. Okay, so the same goes for the quantum mechanics. The Schrodinger equation is the basic equation for quantum mechanics. Okay, it is the mother equation for quantum mechanics. And what we can do? We can only uh, for a particular potential, okay, if it is a bound state for a particular potential, we can have, uh, apply certain boundary condition and initial condition to predict the results of measurement which will validate the Schrodinger equation if it agrees with the experimental results, okay. So, this is what we can do, okay. Schrodinger gave us this equation, okay. Schrodinger gave us this equation, and what we can do. We can take different situations and we can um, may get some results of like energy which is more accessible in the spectroscopic experiments actually okay so as we will see in the later course that how the Schrodinger equation predictions from Schrodinger equations exactly measured with the experimental values okay this is this is where we're going to be okay so this is it for now thank you